Oh, hell. Boom chakalaka dee dee. All right, what's going on? I think these are gonna be the first steaks that we grill in Vegas. And why is it so close? So they could smell your nasty breath. Hey. And All right, what are we doing? These look really good. So we're grilling up some steaks. Haven't grilled steaks in a long, long time. We and get it. You just said it's the first ones in Vegas. We've been here a few months. We get it, dude. And we got some New Yorks. And if you could just be quiet, I can explain what. The oh, why don't we get on. the Vegas? The Vegas. Why did we get the Why did we get the New York steak and not the Vegas steak? Because the Vegas one won't shut the hell up. That's why. <laughs> now these are us. Really? We got New Yorks. Because my favorite is ribeye, but. We're on a diet, and, and so the ribeyes are a little bit too fatty, but has that great flavor. Mm -hmm. Sirloin's mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. lean. Mm -hmm. So New York, somewhere right in between. So I'm a big fan of New York ones. That's all you're gonna put on it? Just keep it simple. Keep it tradish. Yep. And what, excuse me? Did you say P-I-T-C-H? Yeah. What did you say? You don't even know how to spell, dude. I guess. So then you said B-I-T-C-H? Yeah. Should I put you in timeout? I think you want timeout. Why did you say B-I-T-C-H? I think someone wants my mom. I'm not gonna say that. Why did he say B-I-T-C-H? Why did you say B-I-T-C-H? Yes. <laughs> okay, this is super cute. So today I had my first, one second, I had my first lesson in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then Taika just got back from his Jiu Jitsu class. So these are my geese, <laughs> which is super cute. And those are Taika's geese. Papa, where are your geese? You little lazy. Upstairs, put it away. Like, I'll put everything yeah. away. This <gasps> He's saying that because this guy has the tendency of not completing the task A to Z. So he'll do the dishes. By do the dishes, I mean he'll load them in the dishwasher, put the soap. Oh, I gotta wash those. No, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. No, eat it. It's good. Anyway, so then he'll load it up, put the. It's good, they're clean. They're clean, monkey. Taika. Don't throw them away. No, don't spit it out. Eat it. You're already eating it. It's okay. Oh my God. What's happening to your mouth? Your tongue's gonna fall out. No, just kidding. Come on, do it. Uh, so he'll do that, but then he leaves them there for days and I'm like, uh, complete the task, sir. Did you say B-I-T-C-H again? Yes, it's sometimes. No, you said dish. Dish, 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 dish. Oh, you said dish. You said D I S H? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did your papa just splash you with water? Yeah, I'll splash him back. So, yeah, that's why he's like, the tip of everything away, blah, 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 but yeah, he doesn't do that. Come on, come on, mommy. Come with me. So, while uh, papa hooks up and grills the steak, I'm going to make some sweet potato fries, healthy style. And I'm gonna boil some carrots. Show you how I'm gonna do the sweet potatoes. Yes, baby. No, I'm cooking, dude. Trust you, what are you talking about? All right, so this is how long I have been grilled in. I don't know where the chimney's at. And chimney is that thing that I use to get the charcoal started. And we have been having some crazy like desert winds. So I'm assuming it blew it somewhere like this. Our old dog food box, that's our dogs. But yeah, I don't know where it is. Either that or when we moved, we lost it in the move. But look at the grill though. It still has a tape on it from when we moved to make sure that the lid doesn't fall off. So that's how you know I haven't grilled yet. I'm sure this thing's gonna melt. I don't know if that's gonna affect the food or not, but <gasps> I found it. It's in there. Ah. Dun, 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 There we go. That's how you get the even charcoal. And also, shout outs to Ant. And got me some really dope uh, charcoal. It's the natural kind, mesquite. And that has such a dope flavor compared to just regular briquettes right here. So, shout out to Ant. I'll be using these guys and I'll be cooking up some steak. Ooh! 
Look at that smoke and fire! Damn, that fire is big. Oh yeah. I fire all day long. Okay, so back to making this healthy sweet potato fries that we make at home. I've made them about two or three times already and I feel like every time I make them, I make them a little bit too thick and too long. So this time I made them a little bit thinner and I'm kind of feeling that they might be a little too thin, but we are gonna find out. Um, I'm going to use some Pam because as you can see here, it's zero everything. Before I've used olive oil, but that still is a fat. And so I'm trying to reduce as many calories as possible. So I'm gonna try it today with some Pam. I'm gonna put some garlic salt, some pepper, and a little bit of paprika just for that little flavor. You can barely taste it, but it gives it like this little kick. Not even like a spicy kick, but just like a flavor kick. Um, so yeah. We're just, I'm just gonna eyeball this, to be honest with you. I don't know the measurement for it. I'm gonna eyeball it just to kind of make sure that most of the, if not all of the um, sweet potato is coated and kind of glossy because that's what's gonna make it crispy and crunchy on the outside. And then everything else, same thing. I'm just gonna make sure to eyeball it um, so that you know every piece looks like it's coated properly. With the paprika, I don't really put too much. I Whatever I add here that it looks like I put in there, I like half of that. So I know there's not much measurements. This is all gonna be to taste, but if you wanna find recipes, you can look up um, air fryer, like healthy air fryer uh, sweet potato fries, and you'll find it there. So yeah, I mean, I really don't think it's that complicated though. I don't really think you have to look it up. I think you just eyeball it. Okay, so I went ahead and I sprayed the top layer of the fries with Pam, and I kind of made it uh, a little bit on the saturated side, and then I flipped it, and I flipped it, and I flipped it, and then I added another layer, I flipped it and I flipped it, you know, I mixed it all up. So I did about four layers and I was really looking at it. And the reason why I wanted to do this first before adding any other seasoning is so that I can see um, how coated the pan was gonna be on the fries. So I did that step. Then I added the garlic salt, black pepper, and the paprika. So I kind of wanted to show you what that looks like. Now is when I'm gonna mix everything. You see when you mix it, oh! It's so hard to do this with one hand. Yeah, when you mix it, I mean, you can use your hands. You can do this method. You can see that I might need some more salts. Let's see. Oh my God, these are just flying out. Yep. So I'm gonna add a little bit more salt on this top layer. See, because it doesn't look as coated as it did the first time. And I think that should about, that should do it. Is that? Good job. Okay, I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need two hands. One sec. So now I'm walking over to my air fryer. I have the Gormia. I think that's what it's called. There we go. Cormia. I don't know. Cormia? Gormia? Oh, it's a G. It's not a C. This is the one I got. I got it from Costco. I don't know if it's a good brand or not. Just got it. And then I'm gonna go to fries. And then I'm gonna leave it at 400. And I'm gonna wait for it to preheat. And then once it preheats, we move on to the next step. Okay, so once it's preheated and ready to rock, you throw in your sweet potatoes and you want to make sure that you lay them out this way so that they can all get evenly cooked because then if you stack them all on top of each other, they're going to come out raw. Some of them are going to be burnt. Some of them are, like I said, going to be raw. Um, so this will cook them evenly on both sides and it, all it takes is um, your fries to be at 400 degrees and you just leave them in here for like six to eight minutes or until you see that they're golden and crispy. Um, if you want them extra crispy, you can leave them there a little bit longer. So here goes the first batch. It is a bit tedious, for sure. Hey Google, eight minute timer. Sure, eight minutes, and we're starting now. And that's it, so you do the eight minute, um, you take them out, let them sit for a bit, put in the new batch, and you just repeat the process until you finish all of your fries. So let's see how these turn out, because I did, like I said, cut them smaller and thinner. Okay, so now halfway through the cooking, looking pretty good. We're gonna um, just kind of flip them over a little bit, make sure they're not stacked on top of each other like this. I normally wouldn't have done it this way. 
but I had a one hand operation going on and I think this should be all right. You don't have to be as picky as you were the first time because you've already cooked halfway through. You can leave it like that, should be fine. Put it back in. All right, and there you have it. There are your sweet potato fries. Mmm, whoa, it was not even. Mmm. I think I could have used some more Pam to make them crunchier. But all in all, really, really good. Booyah! Alright, just finished up with the steaks. Came out looking pretty good, nice and juicy. We'll see how it is when I cut into it because I could be really rusty. But it smells good. It looks good. Feels soft. I'm just letting it rest right now. Why are you letting it rest? Is it tired? Flavor is good. <laughs> it's so tired. Damn, with the mom jokes. That's to match my attire, you know? Bow, chicka, bow, wow. Bow, whoa. Ooh, Came is out it really everything juicy. Look at that. you ever dreamed of? So these New York steaks are interesting. It has a, a bone in, and I learned from my recent visit to a steakhouse, if it's a New York steak with the bone in, you know what it's called? Bone in steak? No, it's called a Kansas cut. Oh. Is that interesting? Oh yeah, sure, I'll try it. Oh, that's awkward. Mm, I wish we could have tried that piece. I could try that piece, can I? Isn't there some left? Yeah, what the hell? Were you just gonna really throw it away? Whoa! Mm. It's really good. It's good stuff? Okay. Here's the moment of truth. Well, wait, I have to take out my, hold on. Okay. The last batch over here. Wait, I hope that piece is not, hold on. I just don't want to burn anything down. We'll leave it like that. Okay. All right, here's the moment of truth. Yep. Ooh. Oh, it's a little bit more cooked than I would like. Yeah, I gotta want it. Throw it away. But it's juicy though. Look, the inside's I'm kidding, juicy. I'm kidding. Look at that. Put it in your mouth. Yes, please. Nice and slow, please. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Is it wow. good? Wow. Mm -hmm. Perfect amount of salt. Crispy on the outside. Super soft and juicy on the inside. I actually changed my recipe last minute and I put some onion and garlic powder on it too. It's bomb. Just got carried away. No, it's great. Perfect. Do it like this every time. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It is kind of like a medium rare still. Good job. Right. Boom shot like a dude, dude. Yeah. All right, guys, in the podcast room. Remember the last time my dumbass bought the wrong cable management tape thingy-mabobber? I hope I got the right ones this time because I was looking for something that was like a sleeve with a slit so that I can cover these guys up. But the one that I got was like some Chinese finger trap when we have to slide it down the middle and it was just too small of a hole to fit all these cables in there because they're all different thicknesses. So I'm hoping this is the right one. And if this is the right one, then this is actually helpful in sharing because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, especially us living in the electronics and digital age where there's crazy wires all over the place and it looks like a mess. And this can help fix all of that. Ooh, it is the right one. So you see it? So this one, it opens up, like the sleeve opens up like that, and that's exactly what I wanted. So that will wrap around the cable. So I got the right one here, and I needed one extra lens, because I really like that look, where it looks super high production, and there's a really good depth of field. And uh, so we got 85 millimeter for the podcast, because right now, what we have for that guy over there 
is a 50 milliliter, millimeter, millimeter, kilometer, a 50 millimeter, and it's a little bit wider. So it's good for comedy, but our tone of the podcast, we want to be able to get real intimate and vulnerable and share personal stories. We want a little bit more like tight and have that more like personal feel. But now I'm going to cut this to the exact length of this and wrap it up to show you guys a before and after. And this time, hopefully I do it right because last time I tried to do it before and after and because I got the wrong one, it was just so dumb. But okay, here is the before. Okay, let's see what the after looks like. All right, so I finally did it right this time and bam, look at that. Look at how much more organized it is. It's not a bunch of different wires of different colors of different thicknesses. It just goes from there straight down to here. Hide all the mess behind the board. Doesn't look distracting at all, especially if you just come in. Like that corner just looks like nothing. It just it's inconspicuous, doesn't draw any attention to it. Could probably hide that wire a little bit more. But it's a lot of these little attention to details that shows what kind of workspace it is. You know when you go to like a set or an office and papers all over the place, there's like food out, drinks out, like half charged batteries or uncapped pens. It kind of shows what kind of work and workers are there. It's people that lack attention to detail, aren't meticulous, don't take pride in their work. And so uh, when you enter that place, you're like, oh, okay, cool. People are going to leave their stuff out. I'm going to leave my stuff out. And that type of like culture and feeling is contagious. And because we want to bring in more and more high caliber guests, I want people to come into our studio. Like first when they see the sound boards and like, okay, this place is pretty legit. Then they see the light setups and they're like, okay, this place is really, really legit. Like everything's like industry standard. Wow. They got cameras all over the place. Now, the little attention to detail, they see the labels and they go, okay, these guys are really trying to be professional and even just the small things are really up to par. And I want everyone to come in to uh, really feel like a sense of professionalism and that we really care about this podcast and, uh, and how sick it's gonna look. So yeah, just comparing side by side, look at that, look at that. And it just looks way different, right? That used to look just like that. So the fact that I can make it look like that, it already gives this whole set side like a completely different, more professional feel versus this side, even though the set is just as nice, but that already looks like a mess. So I gotta do that side. And bam, that already looks way more organized. It's just two quarts. I could probably find a better way to streamline it, um, but that already looks way better. So now it's way less distracting. Looks way more professional. I just have it wrapping up, going up to here. I was actually considering tucking this guy into it too, but since this is controlling like the hair lights and stuff, um, in case I needed to troubleshoot, I didn't want to have to like separate and pull it all out. So. I just kept it organized where these are the practical lights, the GeoSide practical lights. They all feed into here. And then this is the uh, the set lights, which I have labeled down there. That will be its own separate thing. But I still like, you know, zip tie everything. Like everything's still super, just because I have a, um, like a switchboard type of thing, even in the back, I still keep it organized with zip ties and stuff. I don't just stuff things in the back like uh you know when you sweep things under the rug or have that miscellaneous drawer even in the back i still try to keep everything organized you see that like all the switches are back there so i can still dim if i need to everything is properly zip tied either zip tied or what are those sandwich wire things called have all that taken care of and yeah you could just get these it's called split sleeves and they come in like 10 foot things so you just gotta cut them i got double just in case but I'm glad I got the right one and I was able to show you guys how it can transform a bunch of messy wires, especially in a computer room or stuff like that. 
All right, you know what I find super cuny? I think it's super cuny when I look downstairs and I just see them spending cuny time together like that. Just caressing each other's hands. I got the little monkey Cheeto and a blanket and now he's all shy. Now, now that he knows that the camera's on, he is up to no good whatsoever. Which also means I think he's tired of being awake. So it's nice and dark, time to take a shower, put them to bed, read our CUNY books, and we will see you tomorrow. Good night. Tell everyone good night, Monkey Cheeto. Good night.